Kathy Vick, deeply awake. And yes, I'm wearing a onesie. It's um, actually a snake onesie. Want to see? I know. It's silly, isn't it? So, hold on. So I guess I'm not Eve in this uh, scenario. I'm the snake. Want an apple, girly? Maybe I was the snake. I don't know. Um, I want to come to you because I, I have a few things to to uh, to give you. I had a meditation that just has blown me away and keeps coming back and is sort of always with me and it makes me smile. So I want to give that to you. But I want to start by just telling you what it's like. I'm reviewing my work. Ooh. I'm up to July of 2013. By that time I'd been channeling for a little bit. I was beginning to feel confident. And the voice really had changed. So it'll be easy now, 111, to um, delineate the volumes because I think this is going to be a four volume. To six volume, it'll be at least four volumes, but um, maybe not that many. Maybe not. Depends on what comes uh, through with the transcription because I was able to give a lot more information with talking. My oh my. Anyway, here we are in January of 2018. And we have a big full moon coming up. A super moon. A blood moon. A blue moon. An eclipse. We're at full moon. Eclipse, yeah. It's a big deal. It's the 31st of January. Sandra Walters said in her last piece that um, she feels that, you know, it's, well, you know, it's just connected to the August eclipse. So heads up, gang. And uh, we all know that the August eclipse was, um, well, at least for me, I can only speak for myself. But the ones in February and the ones then in August, which we all went, you know, talked about at least once socially, those were connected like bookends and now you know realizing that then that energy actually is going to build it, it's all connected which really makes sense doesn't it it makes sense these things are connected they're celestial triggers so um what i what has always been said about celestial triggers remains true they're going to happen whether you notice them or not with or without your participation, it's going to happen. So, there are some things like that. There are some things that are not like that. How you participate is your responsibility. It's your freedom. It's your right. As a human being, you don't have to think or feel anything about that up there in the sky. Or, you can feel it in your uh, DNA. It's completely up to you. Um, to be, you know, for someone who just says, yeah, it's the moon. Um, well then, um, they may not be quite as, um, they may be just as affected as people who are really participating. But what I would say is if um, your intuition is giving you pictures or information, words, flashes of insight well then it might be important you think I think and that's what's been happening to me and it, it links back to um, some of the very 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 first things that happened with this major uh, activation time from August 16 forward from August until about July I went through a series of physical events that um, I, I I participated in. I mean, I was told where to go and what to do, and I mean, I but I I was I did not direct my meditations in any way. Those were all gifts, and the stuff that I decided to focus on and do and all that stuff was all gifts. 
And one of the very first gifts was um, I saw this galaxy in my pelvis. Something I, I was on my bed and I was having a very, very intense meditation. And I was uh, I could see my light body. I was just this white thing and there was this black galaxy that was spinning in my pelvis. And I understood it wasn't mine. I didn't want it in there. Remove it, remove it, remove it, remove it. I kept saying, remove it, remove it, remove it. And it was at a fever pitch. It was a fever pitch. And I don't, I mean, why? I don't know. And then something happened. Something really, really happened. The, the door was busted open upon request and agreement. And what I saw was my pelvis turning into this blue ocean. And I understood that was my my person that my, was my that was my beingness. This placid beautiful still ocean. And I always thought of Pisces, you know. And I heard Magartha, who, um, that was a name that was given to me long ago. Long ago. I was told it was a, f a physician in Atlantis. All right. I couldn't have understood anything else. So Magartha was this beautiful blue ocean. It was dark, it was nighttime, it was indigo, it was beautiful. And then I saw this, this, this ball of fire. And it was going to crash into the ocean. And I really didn't want it to. It was so calm. And I, I thought of the steam and all that, and oh my God, what a mess. But it was inevitable. I mean, what's going to happen when a meteor's careening through the sky? You can hear it. And it's huge, it's massive, and it's on fire, heading for the ocean. It, it's going to crash. And at that moment of impact, it didn't crash. In that moment, what happened was this, this beautiful blue scene that I'd been in went whoosh, and immediately they started to go around and around and around and around, around and um, and then um, I, I, uh, I saw these multiply and there were 12 of them and they were in my fields there's more there's a lot more about that in the old stuff I regret now ever having erased anything. But I understood this was a forward moving project and I didn't need to keep everything. But I, I did delete some things I felt uncomfortable with and I really, really wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> but uh, I will hopefully be believed because um, the the video camera after 16 of, of April the 16 was my typewriter and so what happened in front of the camera was captured without editing and it was published that's how I worked with my writing and um, I would watch it once and if I if it, I felt any kind of uh, problem with it just I just didn't like it. If I thought I was being passive aggressive or bitchy or whatever, then I wouldn't publish it. So if you see bitchy passive aggressive ones, which you will, well then, at the time I thought that was okay. So that's what this brings up. I think the blue and red of these uh, moons is uh, significant not only for me by sharing my story. Well, you might look at the blue and the red of that event differently now, maybe. Maybe. For me, the message of that uh, event that occurred on my bed with my pelvis in my reality 
in my DNA is what I really want to um, embody and anchor and commit to. Not anymore as some amorphous thing that might visit me and might not, depending. It's me finally setting intention. I wasn't really able to set intention before. I was being led through the shadow, through the valley of the shadow of doubt. I had to be led. And I laughed out loud the other day as I realized why. That proof? Well, it's a good thing I was doubtful. It's a good thing I lived it. It wouldn't be believed otherwise. And the way it was done. Why all of the meditations and sparkles? Why? Why the impetus to write? Look at this, look at this, look at this. I keep thinking as I review the work. What an 1111. What an amazing construct. What a gift. And the beauty of the words. And of the concepts I give on tape. I'm, I'm really pleased that I, I, I could do this and it really wasn't under as much amnesia as I guess I thought I had. It's pretty purposeful. But it wasn't done on purpose. <laughs> so, for me, the, in the intention um, seems to be around um, really living this. Before I was a receiver, I was a I was a student of patience, compassion, understanding, allowance, tolerance. And um, my writer's mind, I was sitting there reading one essay and thinking, I might just be this. I might just be sort of a critical, judgmental, thinking, you know, laser of bitch. Maybe that's just what I'm going to be. Would I be okay with that? No. I think what I do is I interpret that I'm a bitch because I'm just not going to take on your pain anymore. And people get pissed about that. And they call you names. And who's doing the name calling in this room today, this morning? Me. So for me, part of this is um, making a commitment to how I see myself. What storyline am I going to commit to? Am I going to commit to the twisty, dark, winding road of depression and des desperation and fucking up? and not having a clue bumping into every wall and losing everyone I loved and feeling no safety anywhere. Am I going to commit to that as my story? Because it's loaded with feelings and with pictures and with body memory. The memories are not good. It was that story that led to this one. Without having been dialed in the way I was. Without the things that happened to me.
and no one wants those things. No one does. It got me to go someplace safe and big and real. I loved God always as a child and I had visions as a child and I had hardship as a child and I had joys as a child and as I grew I had friends and I had people who loved me so much and I hurt them very deeply and others who I loved who hurt me very deeply. Didn't you? But there's a different story that runs along with me because I lived two lives. I lived that sad place, sure. But a part of me always knew it was an affectation. Part of me always knew it was trading. Part of me always knew it was re required because that's the only way I could get uh, to the place where I could generate, you know, really deep light, really big light. And in this parallel story, I had help. Yes, in the sad story, I had visitations. In the parallel story, I had teachers. I had teachers. from the time I was in high school with uh, mediumship, clairvoyance, tarot, channeling. On and off. I had friends who um, saw me or who at least let me be and let me get bigger and stronger in their presence. Because for the most part, I was living that second life. The one where everything was, it was just, it's, imagine being a teeny tiny thing and there is cast iron on top of you. Cast iron, cast iron, cast iron, cast iron. It was just, it was impossibly hard. And that's just how it felt. I mean, people weren't, there, were, there weren't, you know, terribly evil people around me. There were very impulsive people around me and people who are at very, very prone to acting out around me. But, you know, the bigger part of me said, it's probably just said, well, this will come in handy when I'm a psych nurse. You know what I mean? So it's that secondary life that, um, I, why not see that as blue and red? Do you have that going on? Is there a little bit of, you know, you don't share the sparkles? I certainly didn't. I wasn't going to let, you know, anything but purity be there. So I, I had this love of God. And that pierced the darkness of that other life in the form of the Bible and uh, Sunday school and things like that. There were opportunities to be with the sacred there that was good. There were other opportunities and they started to bleed through early into this other life, which I now really want to commit to. Because committing to it means I, I perhaps will be behaving a bit different. Nothing bad. Just, um... I don't know. I really can even see the, 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 the eclipse in January. I can kind of see the, the, the February eclipse is a blue one. The August one is a red one. And how they play on the surface of that full moon is January laughing casting colors. 
like jewels through a glass. Those colors. So I think that it's all connected. And I think reading these, these works and realizing just how long this has been. I get to commit. I get to say thank you to one lifetime and place it where it needs to be placed as illumination in my life. No longer a shadow. I want to give to you what I was given in meditation and then I'll leave. The reason I have music going is because there's uh, car traffic out there. I, you know, I live right next to highways. I love it. And, uh, and um, there's a lot of traffic today. So um, I thought, oh, I'll put on. So I like this music, this track particularly on, on YouTube, but I couldn't call it up. All I knew was a couple of words from it. So I put in happy serotonin music and this gold face, you know, whoo, shows. And it's like, oh, yeah, I want that. <laughs> so that's what's playing. It's really beautiful. And I'll put the track on. Um, uh, I'll credit it, Kate. Okay? I want to make sure I do that. So I think I gave you some beautiful things to think about. So is it an eclipse or is it kind of meaningful? Well, to me, it might be a little bit meaningful if I think it through, if I give it thought, if I, but more, if I feel it. Imagine what can be done during an eclipse. It's profound. It never stops being profound. How are you going to use it? It's energy that's going to be sitting there waiting for you in a physical way. You can do a lot with meditation. Don't get me wrong. I'm living proof. But you can't get places, certain places, without celestial triggers. They're part of the weave. It's important to know about them. Um, if you want to use their energy. And it's big energy, so why not? Why not play, huh? So let me tell you about a meditation is big. You can play with that, okay? So, um, um, let me think here. Well, okay, I was... Sometimes I lament that I don't have a partner, right? And then I take a look. I mean, they did this at the end of my meditation. They said, we'd like you to now just take a peek at your situation. And there I was, a blanket over my head, mumbling to myself at, I don't know, it was like a Monday at 11.30 in the morning. And um, they said, this, this um, is something that needs to be okay with whoever you choose. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Because um, that's how I roll sometimes. At least I have been. Sometimes. Not always. Good God. Sometimes I'm super busy. But sometimes I'm given time to do what I do. And it, at this particular time, I was under a blanket. Because I'd been called to uh, meditate. It was very strong. And I, I always say okay to that. And uh, I needed dark. And then... All of a sudden, I had this ball in front of me, and I put my hands out about maybe a foot away from my, my tummy, like this, okay? It was right there. I could feel it. I tried getting bigger, and I could see I'd moved away from it. I got tried to get littler with my hands, and I couldn't because it, was, it had a shape. And, um, and then I was shown a very large red faceted like a faceted like a diamond a red stone it was huge and it was um, in a, a one space and tumbling ever so easily la 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 just moving along just they said imagine now what it must have been like and they'd led me back to the body they'd always said you know they 
there's documentation about when they did an evacuation with me with gold. Um, they activated the gold in my body. And they told me there are crystals in your body. And I saw these beautiful in a line. Twelve. And they called them diamond, diamond crystals, diamond like quartz. But they shone like diamonds and they were just like a, a flake. And they were so beautiful. They came to this um, jewel. The jewel had begun to spin. And it was spinning so fast, they told me, that at a certain point it becomes a substance. It becomes a substance. It becomes a substance. They showed me how the diamond quartz and this large, large, weirdly large, like taking up my entire torso large, that big of a crystal, spinning as a substance, I saw how it all spun and my head began to spin just like it did the first time I felt my Mirkamba. And I looked around and I saw that I was in a tunnel. Straight up and down a tunnel. And the channeling that, that I do, that voice, was, was in the tunnel. And they said, isn't this fun? Now you have an announcer in your tunnel. Because I realized that's my light body. I could see the spinning down below after I'd removed myself because the spin was so intense. And I understood this is how you travel. And um, so they explained, oh, they're going to really be, they wanted to know, they wanted my permission, do I want to learn how to bilocate? Do I want to learn some of the hardcore sciences now? Am I ready? Am I willing? <laughs> of course I said yes. And they asked me to please stop grieving. It's time to stop grieving at all. All of it. It's required now. I heard Kaipacha talk about grief. And um, he said, you know, that is the personalization of, of change. Loss is. And grief, of course, is its, mag is its mother. <laughs> And truly, part of that dark life was walking as a death walker. A death walker. I've been dealing with death since I was a child. Just a kid. One of my first jobs. But before that, always fascinated by it. Always. Always. Looking for the pictures of dismemberment and stuff in, in old uh, picture books that my mom had from every year, for every year. I always went to the weird. So it's always been there. And I think I can see this whole thing being a culmination of my um, dark and my light. My twistiness and my innocence. My male and my female. My perpetrator me as perpetrator, me as victim. And let the, that moon and that eclipse just uh, transmute it, void it, bless it and release it, as I have. Because really what remains uh, or and what continues is an alchemy. But I really enjoyed reading one of the essays where it said gentleness. That is a, this is a, there's a dispensation of the magenta ray. And um, it, the, the wording is just exquisite. But basically the idea is that the gift is compassion. But the way that you get the gift, you have to unwrap it. It just doesn't come 
loop. You have to unwrap it. You have to activate it. You gotta put batteries in it. And you do that with gentleness. And I'm not gentle, for the most part. And I would tell you about the last week. It's, it's not, I don't feel any guilt or shame, but it's brought to my attention. It's sort of like I'm alarmed at how I sometimes behave. And in the shower, finally in the shower yesterday, how do I go forward? What is my countenance? How I kept getting, it's more light than dark. About the last week, like boom, boom, boom. And with lessons and everything, but I'm finally in the shower. And it comes home yet again. I am now living the life that I cried for as I was writing that. The life I yearned for, that I knew was appropriate for me, that I needed and never had, was always denied and made fun of. I'm living it. And it's an insult to the work to not hold wonder and gratitude. To be in the space of worry now it's almost an affront. It's obviously not well thought out. It's almost kind of gross. So that's how I'm going to be using the eclipse. It's how I'm going to be using, you know, kind of coming to a place of, I have felt very guilty in my life for, for saying no. And I've, I feel guilty about this work because I was afraid I had hurt a really dear friend of mine by being so honest. Why I would think that, I don't know. I don't know. But I thought that, you know, there might be, I, I had a fear all the way through the, the, the recordings and I kept a lot tamped down, as I did with my writing. And I think from that I can learn I do have discretion. Oh, dear one, do I have discretion? And now, going forward, I finally have dignity. I finally do. I know of and can touch innocence, purity, divine, unlanguageable love, and sense, coherence. So I'm in this tunnel. I'll end with this. It's so pretty. I'm in the tunnel. And then I'm just sort of boom, done. And I'm just sort of floating, floating. It feels so good. And I, I have never felt it. It felt just so good. I was so huge. I was that big mercury blob. It was a vision that I had at the very beginning. I saw this silver blob out in a dark star-filled galaxy and I zoomed in closer and it was just humongous but it had arms it had legs it had a head a face a hair it was a woman and I, I call her my silver goddess but I knew I was she. Oh, it felt so good. And at the end of that meditation where I'd gone and seen the tube and everything, I felt the floating. I looked and I realized just who I am in this moment. And I looked up. It was so 
an. It's a horse. The eye of God. And we were just looking at each other in rapture. For eternity. Why would you want to do anything else? I, I don't. I was so happy. I like to carry that kind of gentleness with me every day. I would like to be able to see other people's um, aggression as their own. I would like to see my aggression cease. In the shower I realized how I thought about all of my blessings, how easy things are. Sure, I have pain and sure I'm facing surgery, but um, I've never been more blessed, more happy. And I realized, and a, a tear came, I realized I'm safe. I feel safe. I'm finally safe. You might say, I'm crazy to think I didn't feel safe before. That's okay, you didn't live it. I'm safe. So indeed, that dark twistiness, the codependence, the paranoia, the suspicion, the judgments, the angers, the pettiness. It's for a different time. It's very appropriate then. Required skills of survival. But not now. Now I have the silver goddess. Now I have these tapes of my of me going way. Now I have my writing. And you. Always and forever. You. I did this for you. 